with hot spots there in the area. Well, a popular pizza chain in Texas is now allowing its customers to pay for their pizza with Mexican pesos. Pizza patrons, which caters to a largely Latino clientele in the Dallas area, is saying they want to offer their customers who frequently cross the border the convenience of paying with their leftover pesos. The president of Pizza Patron, Antonio Suad, spoke with MSNBC's Allison Stewart on the most. You have to understand that Pizza Patron is a brand that prim primarily uh, locates in Latino communities, and a great majority of our customer base is a Latino base. Mm -hmm. And several of these people over the holidays have traveled back to Mexico to visit relatives or whatever and have come back uh, to the U.S. where they live legally, and they want to uh, get rid of those darn pesos, and we're there for them. All right, for more on getting rid of those darn pesos, let's bring in John Fonte of the Hudson Institute and Michelle Wooker of the Immigration Policy Center. Thanks for being with us. Great Thank to you. see you again, Amy. Thanks. All right, John, so anything wrong with this pizza chain wanting to let its customers get rid of their uh, unwanted pesos? Well, historically, America's been the most successful uh, immigration uh, country really in the history of the world. We've help people uh, become Americans, uh, the days of Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, people learned English, uh, they pledged loyalty to the United States, uh, they became Americans, and we had a great formula, a great success story. Uh, today, unfortunately, we're, we're, uh, it's sad, but we're, we're doing the opposite. We're having bilingual education so people aren't learning English. And instead of learning about uh, American pride, they're learning multiculturalism. They can even, uh, with dual citizenship, they can even vote in different countries. So this little issue wouldn't mean anything by itself, but it's part of a larger pattern. Let's, let's get, let's, uh, we got the formula right for 200 years, as I say, in the days of Theodore Roosevelt and Democrat Woodrow Wilson. Uh, let's get back to that formula of Americanization, and uh, we won't have to worry about that. Michelle, does this set a bad president, uh, precedent? Does it lead to perhaps greater problems? No, well, I think it's actually a brilliant marketing play. I mean, we're here talking about it on national television. I don't, I don't think it's any more of a danger than the, the, uh, the Taco Bell Chihuahua. I mean, should we send the pound after him for saying "Yo quiero Taco Bell"? Um, you know, I think it's, it's really a, a classic American food, pizza, uh, with a marketing ploy to bridge one generation of immigrants uh, to a an earlier one. And as far as immigrants learning English, uh, immigrants, you look at polls, they absolutely want to learn English. Uh, the reason that we don't see people learning English faster than they do is often because uh, there are huge waiting lines across the country for English classes. Uh, immigrants working two or three jobs uh, have a hard time getting to classes, but the desire to learn English absolutely is there. I think the greater danger is if we say, oh, you aren't ever going to become American. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're putting up such a wall that we shut people out, that's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy, and that's the much greater danger. John, I want to get uh, your response to Michelle's, uh, uh, I guess, uh, statement. perhaps this is, in an ironic twist, American capitalism at its finest. <laughs> what would you say to that? Uh, well, I think we should be emphasizing uh, Americanization. That means uh, learning, means not just learning English, means loyalty to the United States. It means uh, uh, that in our schools, we, we do what we used to do, teach about American heroes. And I think the oath of allegiance should mean something. When you take an oath and say, I absolutely and entirely renounce all allegiance to any foreign state, my loyalty now is to the United States, that means they should only vote in the United States. So we, we had a wonderful formula of Americanization, and I'm, I'm worried, I'm, I'm upset that we've, we've gotten off of that formula, and if we can get back to that, I think we'll do a great job with it. All right, John Fonte, Michelle Walker, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry for some pizza now after looking at all that video. That's the one thing I can take away from this. We can all agree on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Amy. House Democrats start their first 100-hour.